carry on with the seeds. Now today's seeds. Give now. a choice. I'll save a tree, not a human being. Sit, 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 sit. So uh, this is something new we started seeds about uh, three years back. Sorry. We found that uh, okay. we found that the seeds in the market have been uh, dominated by the multinational companies, corporations, who want to monopolize the seed market. Not only in India, but for the whole world. If you see uh, the most of the papayas in the market today, if you see most of the market, uh, the papayas in the market today, they are uh, seedless. You buy an Italian lemon, it is seedless. So there is somebody who is controlling the seed market. So we decided that we must get into this market and try to protect our indigenous seeds. Our, seed, our heritage. It's our heritage. Not to allow this commercialization and destroy our original seeds, fruit, fruit seeds. You know what's happening to Mahaja bananas, what's happening to black rice, core wood rice, disappearing in the market. Well, everything is now oriented towards the profit, not the benefit the human beings will get. So here we are distributing free the papaya seeds. Now if you cut a papaya nowadays, rarely you will find a seed in the papaya. Because maybe they are genetically manipulated or isolated in such a manner that people don't get seeds to grow them again. So we try to patent, patent the, our, our heritage, our nature given seeds. It's given by nature to us. Nobody has a right to monopolize it and deprive the people to grow the seeds. So here we are doing Seeds which are get disappearing fast, we want to give it free. But people don't care. Anything is given free, you don't know what to do. I'm here for almost two hours, nobody is interested in this. It's free seeds. Everybody bought paid seeds. After your talk, it will all go. If you had seed, they would have bought it. After your talk, it will go, don't worry. Yeah, I don't know. But still, I'm offering free because these are the rare seeds. You cut up, you grow this papaya, cut it open, you'll find it. The papaya is loaded with seeds. Nowadays, you don't find it. Except the indigenous, if you are growing indigenous papaya. Yeah. So the ones I have done in the office of seeds, they yeah. all come from the marketplace. Okay. Every papaya I bought had lots of seeds. Okay. But they are not surviving. They grow tall and then they get some kind of disease. Maybe lack of nutrition. I think I think I think Ozzy will be talking, Dr. Ozzy will be talking later in the evening about uh, papaya planting. No, there is nutrition. There is some issue. There's a rock or wall or you know, you can't grow. But is it a hybrid seed? See, there are people who, are, who don't realize what seed. They collect the seeds, like how I collected the seeds. They collect them and they pack it and sell them. You know, see, a normal person cannot sell those genetically manipulated seeds. Why do I get the, where do I, where do I get the genetically manipulated seed? They are all controlled by the multinationals. So what do you get in the market or what do you get from me are the real indigenous local like, seeds. like which ones? Like the papaya I am talking about. What's your variety? How many? We got two varieties. No, no. I mean, how many varieties of all seeds? We got. I got about 36 to 40 varieties of seeds at the moment. Almost 40 varieties of seeds. I had announced 30, but then a lot of farmers came forward and said, "Take my seeds. I have been preserving the seeds, so my number of seeds expanded by the time I announced because most of the seeds." They have come from the farmers, except a few, like uh, honey melon. The, most of them have come from the, the farmers who have been growing organic. I ensure that the, farm, the seeds I source are organically grown from the farmer. So the farmers supply me the seeds and they pack and give it. Carry on, carry on. So th that is the whole idea that we share the seeds. The price at 20 rupees, which is very, very nominal, the cost is much higher. We consider it, but we don't mostly consider labor. So 20 rupees is nothing. And that actually encourages people to buy these seeds. And they grow. I hope they grow because it's a very small value, 20 rupees. But people who are passionate will always grow. And there is so much of information available today on the internet, like YouTube, how to germinate, grow the seeds. How to take care of the people grows I was observing radish, and the lady who bought of Viva radish seeds. She said that she tried buying so many times the radish seeds that they never grew. 
But when she took from me, her pots were full of her. You know, she grew in the pots. They grew so much, they were overflowing. Why? And she sent me photographs. Why? But the seeds were good. See, what depends on seed quality. Like I've been trying to grow passion fruit. Three times I failed. So the fourth time I succeeded. So many times people ask, you give the seed, it will work out. So we put a disclaimer that the responsibility of growing the seeds are of the buyer. Because there's a lot of factors involved. Like the weather, there's too much of sunlight, there's too much of rain, get washed out. Or there are rodents around, insects, birds. So they, they tend to eat and destroy the seeds. So sometimes they find that the, the say, the uh, coconut seed, seven inch seed is grown, one inch is coming out. And suddenly overnight is eaten by the rodent. And they call me up and say, the seed has resistance disappeared. No, I can't blame them. I ask them, there are rodents around. And it costs a lot of money to go up down. So I am based in Panjim, I go to Bolivar to check out this, what's happening. So, so 20 rupees versus, you know, what is invest. But what happened is, I love people who are passionate about growing. So here money doesn't come. I go and visit them, I try to learn. For me, it's constant learning. There's no end to learning. But I'm still learning about seeds. I'm just, may not be even 1% of my knowledge, actually, of the seeds, which I want to learn. I learn a lot on YouTube. I learn mostly from the farmer's experience. People's experience, people like the woman who bought ready seeds and grew and she was successful. So these are the experiences that make me enrich my knowledge. And I always try to share with others, whatever possible. So we can, because ultimately the most important thing is the food security. You know what happened during COVID? There was no food. People were just scavenging for food. And then people realized, I think, the importance of food. Everybody is growing today vegetables, fruits, grains. So the food security is the most important because over 90 percent of the vegetables and fruits come from outside Goa. And it's high time we grow our own food. Of course, there are risks like weather and other factors in growing because the climate change is affecting a lot of farmers. A lot of farmers are losing their money because of climate change. So if you can grow them in under controlled climate, like to protect them from excessive rain or excessive sunlight. The sunlight is also too strong. You expose them to too strong, too strong sunlight, they can die below the heat. So various factors are involved. Like you can put some cover on top, some leaves on top, some shade, you know, so they don't get directly. We are also selling this other exotic seeds like Thai basil, Italian basil, Thai chili, which have become very common in Goa because of the lot of tourists and people who go abroad and come down and say they want to make the salads and so they don't use a lot of greens. So people are happy to buy those seeds and grow it at home. People have been successfully growing and getting good yields. And all our seeds, no, no for chemical fertilizer involved, purely for organic manure. So the yield may not be as high as chemical fertilizer, but quite decent enough to get a good crop. Do you have any question? What is the best way to plant for a biodegradable and ensure that it really survives? Because we just throw it out and we can't really manage it. Now, just to explain experience, I had uh, too much of excessive seeds. Uh, I didn't have place to dry them. So, I, what I did is I just put them in a small patch of them. And this is the problem. Alice, Dr. Oswald is addressing this particular subject if he comes on time on papaya trees and making yeah, making sure they survive. I am based in Paris. I am based in Paris. And I told you how much. Okay, I am Avinash Nandan. Actually, it's not my profession. My profession is journalism. Business journalism. Yeah, I was. I have been an environmental and business journalist, but decided to go and get into farming. No, I want more about farming. Because I can't afford land. It is very. It has become very expensive in Goa. So if any of you all want to invite Avertino over to your place, he would be very happy to come over with his seeds. You just make a small arrangement at some public meeting place where people gather. He'll come with his seeds and... Yeah. We also conduct something called flash sale with Nesta. We started with the brown rice. You heard about the Goa brown rice? Yeah. Jodi brown rice. We started with it. We big I and Nesta are jointly doing this... He's outside, to stop. organically grow brown rice with bread. You see, most of the rice in the market is fully polished. There's nothing. 
purely carbohydrates or starch. So here we have the brown rice that's just selling there. You can buy 1 kg and 2 kg packs. It's very cheap. It's 90 rupees a kilo. It's very healthy. It's packed with antioxidants. Today at 70 here, they can 70. Today only for today. And the money goes straight back to the state. Correct? Huh? The money goes straight back into the state. The money goes back into the state. Into the people and the cultivators. Yeah. So which money are you talking about? The, whatever people are paying for your rice. No, no. What actually we do it in another way. What we do is, na, like, now supposing I cultivate in some village, paddy. Basically, I help out. The people themselves pay for the cultivation of their land. Then what happens is, we get a certain amount of rice. So, a person wants only, say, X amount of that rice. So, we, give, we make X amount of that rice. The remaining paddy, we purchase at, I purchase at 5 rupees more than what the government pays them. If they sell it to a government authorized person in the paddy, they get 20 rupees. We purchase it at 25 rupees. And then we make the rice and then we sell it. But most of this rice is mostly grown in the Kazans of Goa and it's grown without any fertilizer or either organic nor this. Because Kazan mostly they get self fertilizer. The water from the rivers come inside, they get self fertilizer. So we do not use. Neither we use pesticides, no pesticides, nothing. So this is some form of uh, cooperative farming. Where where has it been successful so far? In Sanus, there in Santa Cruz, we are doing it. It's done in Siura, Mandol, and Siura, Mandol. And then now we did it. So many other, many other, uh, this has started. And I think the point is that they were battling this thing of lands being kept fallow also. Yeah. No? So what is happening is our, our farmland is getting concretized. So if I can briefly go a little bit off, the subject connected to the seeds and our food security. If you see different parts of Goa, what we notice is a large scale destruction of our edifice. So that's really painful to see the way things are going on in Goa. Trees are being cut, the hills are being cut, the rivers are being destroyed, our mangroves are being destroyed, our sand dunes are being destroyed. So after seeing this so much destruction, we build up a case against this. And I and another friend of mine, we filed up public interest litigation in the High Court. And we took up three villages of Goa, where there have been very large scale uh, farmlands and very large scale filling up, illegal filling up and destruction of uh, fields. Which three? Uh, the three are, one is Sukur village, the second is Samolda village and three, third is the Giri village. They were a cluster of villages close by. So it was easy and I was to pass by very often and it was painful to see the destruction. And there are big guys involved in this, the politicians and the mafia, the police, and a lot of them are involved in the destruction. And uh, after filing the PIL, I got a favorable order from Justice Sona, my Sona, uh, that the structures in these fields have to be knocked off. And the lands, the, the fertile lands have to be restored to the original sea. So it was a big victory for us. But the victory is you know, normally short lived because the question is implementation of the model. And you know, in India and Goa, the, the, the system works very slow. And what we need is now that the president is a powerful, they do not allow us to remove the structures. But luckily, we have a collector who has been very pro environment and she has assured us that let's start the demolition process. So that's the most important. Right now there is no fear. On the third the second goes, the third goes. We have got about few hundred religious structures in these places. We have already mapped them. We have already surveyed them officially by the government of Goa. That survey, along with the collectors, uh, the order of I could was that the collector, the of the flying squad, the deputy collector, of the flying squad, accompanies us, the petitioners. Along with the team of uh, police and PWD and uh, uh, electricity department, because all the power connections given, the water connection given to these illegal restaurants and all sort of commercial establishments which have destroyed our fields, must be knocked out, must be demolished, and the lands must be restored to the original state. So that's our that's our our objective. That all those who are destroying Goa will not spare them. You know, so message has to go across and now the government has agreed after a lot of discussions and meetings and petitions okay at least they'll start with one big structure in each village being demolished you know so there is some deterrence
some exemplary punishment has to be given to stop this destruction of Goa. And we are strongly you know, determined to ensure that nobody destroys Goa. And I mean, it's a very uphill task, it's not easy to say, but it's so much of struggle that keeping on giving them reminders that you are violating the, you know, the order of the High Court, there are so much of violations. I keep getting threats, you know, I will break your bonds and will kill you and all that. Anyhow, we don't fear anybody because we are fighting to save Goa. And we want all, all your bones who are here or anybody who is here. We need to save this fields. There are so many few fields left now. If you destroy these fields and if there is some problem where the virus hits us, where will we get our food from? Most people will die of starvation than virus. Because there won't be any food left. There won't be any land left to grow the food. See in Japan and other countries, they, the farmers are protected, the fields are protected. The state gives them subsidies, support, all sort of assistance. And here what we do, we just want to fill up like plots and sell the land. Which doesn't even belong to the pe those people who are selling. It's the ancestral land, it's the commoner's land from the communities. Which have people have toiled and in their own hands and struggled to maintain these fields. And just overnight they want to fill up and make a quick buck and go to London or wherever they want to disappear. It's not fair. We are not sparing them. We are fighting in various villages, even we are fighting in messes where a lot of Kumudar land has been cornered by different people, including people from Karnataka, coming and buying and destroying the land and mangroves. So cases are going on in NGT, we are fighting in NGT also cases. I personally appeared in some cases, I appeared myself, because sometimes we can't afford a lawyer, it's very really tough. So it's better to appear directly and fight for these cases than, you know. But sometimes there is a problem of technical, you know, to really stay now NGT, you know, we are also trying to get some lawyers on board. There are a lot of lawyers who are helping us. Seeing the cause we are fighting is uh, good. And they don't charge us any much money except for the cost of paper and typing and other traveling costs. So there are, there are good people who are lawyers who are willing to support us. And because of them, we have got good orders. Unfortunately, one of the lawyers become become in accordance with the judge, no high court judge. So we are also happy that we got, but we are losing one lawyer, so we have to look for another lawyer. So this has been a, sorry to bore you. Um, this, our struggle is going on and we plan to expand this struggle to other villages to save our fields, our farmlands and our lives. Any questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, really nice.